Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming down and joining us. Um, we are on YouTube already, live and ready to go. So if you are on YouTube, there's all three of us here. Really pleased to see you and excited to have you back. On Instagram, it is, of course, at the moment, just myself, which means we're waiting for two very important people to come down and join me. And hopefully the tech will work because sometimes it doesn't, mostly when it's me. I'm wondering today if we can get Philippa up first because normally Philippa comes in and it takes about five hours to get her up on the screen. We've got a good one today. We've been excited about this one for a while. In fact, I think ever since we started putting the list together, when we first had the idea that we were going to do this, this is one of the first ones that we put in. And <laughs> we, oh, Philippa's in first! Catwoman! Wow, what has happened? Um. Yeah, uh, there, thank you. Yeah, so we've been really, really looking forward to this one. So I hope you have too. We've been saying for weeks, oh, it's going to be a good one. Some people thought it was going to be Richard the Third. We're like, no, too obvious. Mm -hmm. And a couple of guests last week that you thought it was going to be Richard Rich, and here he is. So yeah, we've been looking forward to this one. Um, oh, actually, that reminds me. We sometimes Sorry, get people me. put requests to join up on Instagram. Um. So just to let you know that we aren't ever going to request to join anybody on Instagram if you put a request in, unless we have a guest planned, um, it, it's not going to happen. I only say that because it happens a lot and I don't want anybody to think we're ignoring you. We're not ignoring you in the sense that we see the request, but we're not going <laughs> so we to ignoring you in the sense that we're not going to do it. <laughs> so that you know all right then here we are so lots of people coming in on both platforms and i'm just like oh goodness there's quite a lot of comments coming in on instagram and everything already so it's lovely to see you all thank you so much for coming down i hope you're all right now if i could get a <laughs> cat particularly really hates this dude so it's gonna get sweary so cat, I think mm. it's time. yes it is um before we jump into the rich meister general Welcome. If you hear screaming in the background, um, my two-year-old has decided that sleep is for the week. So uh, we will. I'm, this is why Catherine has um, is manfully taking over the uh, Instagram that was supposed to be me tonight. But I said there are points where I'm going to have to mute because um, he he is he is an angry <laughs> nugget tonight. God bless him. Um, hopefully, you may hear him shouting. Anyway, let's continue. Welcome to History of Stock. It's just gone quarter past eight. And this is going to get wild. <laughs> we called it History After Dark because when we made it, it was winter. And so at quarter past eight um, GMT, it's dark. It's now quarter past eight BST and it's not dark. However, it still fits because we will like to discuss the darker side of history. We want to impart historical facts, but in doing so, we will be using four letter expletives we will additionally be uh doing smutty jokes innuendo and generally talking about things that may be not suitable if you are eating there are some rules <laughs> yeah, to follow before we get to those if you happen to be in an open plan office with a judgmental boss i suggest you put a headphone in the stuff we talk about will get you a disciplinary if you want that crack on if you are in a car a, a living room a kitchen with a small child who is a dobber we have named this child timmy timmy is a problem let's merch mm -hmm. check it out timmy is the kind of child who hears something that is arguably very offensive once doesn't mention it at the time locks it away in their little mind pack takes that information with them to school like a little golden nugget and then shares it with the uh, teacher now this teacher in my mind is like miss honey from matilda and she is uh, a delicate soul who does not watch the depraved filth that is the three of us. So she does not know the cardinal primary rule of history after dark, which is if you don't know what it means, don't Google it. <laughs> it's not for you, baby. It's just not for you. And that's fine. There's other stuff that's for you. Um, so she has Googled it. And now Miss Honey needs at least six months of intensive therapy to deal with the horrific mm. stuff that she's heard. Uh, and you're going to be asked to pay for that. It's also <laughs> embarrassing because you've had to come up to school. So if you don't want that to happen, put a headphone in. Alternatively, you can always watch us on the playback, on the Instagram or the YouTubes. I say you can. I, I will put the caveat out there that it's entirely possible that there will be an occasion where once again, we've done it one, one time before, we will say something that is so offensively depraved, so borderline illegal, that we have to yeet the footage into the sun of history. So it's always worth watching us live. 
if you possibly can. So I've already mentioned one of our rules, which is if you don't know what it means, don't Google it. Another one of our rules is this is not a drinking game. You're, you're, I pray to God you're all adults, but this is not a <laughs> drinking game. If you choose to do so, we don't endorse that message. We now have a third rule, and, and the third rule has come up because, and we mentioned it last week, the third rule exists because we had a comment about complaining about our swearing, <laughs> and we got fairly uh, aerated about it in our group chat, and then I realised that there is a thing on the internet whereby people like to be shamed uh, and it's their kink so they deliberately go to people's social media and say things that will get pinned that will get shared elsewhere so that other people can mock them because there is frankly no way that anybody could listen to the disclaimer that i have just <laughs> said and be also able to write in a message to us be so foolish <laughs> that they don't realize they're going to be swearing. There's literally no way those things don't equate together. Thus, they it's their kink. Now look, I'm never going to kink shame. I'm never going. I'm never <laughs> going to yuck your yum. Whatever floats you, whatever tickles your pickle, mate. Whatever floats your boat, you crack on, sweetheart. But what I will say is always with consent. And if you are trying to in involve us in your kink without our permission or knowledge, that's gross. So that's the third rule now. The kink. Or if you're going <laughs> to, no, all, all kink requires kink requires consent. <laughs> so if you see somebody commenting on the fact that we swear, uh, then uh, you don't please don't in. respond to them. They're looking for that. So those are the things. And uh, have you spotted that on Insta, Kat? Yeah, Marissa. We'll do, if you don't like it, love, you can leave. So there you go. See ya. There's another. There's another um, rule for someone who says we've got too many rules. If you don't like it, off you go. <laughs> off you pop. That's right, the polite go, version. Friends. So uh, Paige says she hasn't heard one single thing good thing about Richard Rich. Well, he's dead. That's one good thing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so you know. So, we are beginning at the very beginning. Who's got him? Who's got the start? Is it you? I, I, yeah, it is me. So I was just looking for the contentious comment. I missed it. So, um, yeah, it's me. Okay, so Richie Rich what would say so good. He named him twice, but no. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, there's there's some obscurity over his birth date. He's born around about 1496, so the end of the 15th century. Uh, in the reign of Henry the Seventh, and that's because that's that's actually, it's it's a bit obscure because it's down to a 1551 document aging him at around about 45 or more, which makes me think that maybe he wasn't looking good for whatever age the writer supposed he was. Because <laughs> it's like it's 45 or more actually. So, um, however, we know that he trained as a lawyer. We don't know where, perhaps Cambridge. But we do know that he entered the Honourable Society of the Middle Temple, um, usually just shortened to Middle Temple, in 1516. And he became a reader at the New Inn, which is one of the inns of Chancery, in the first half of the 1520s. So he's making himself up, uh, working his way up, sorry, excuse me, in the, uh, the land of the uh, lawyers and the law type people. Um, he actually writes to Cardinal Wolsey, he's looking for a patron. I don't know what happens with that, except... Um, it must have worked to some degree because he was helped. He, he became an MP and he was helped in that endeavour by um, one of Wolsey's staff, um, a man called Thomas Aldley, um, who was uh, Speaker of the Commons. But other than that, he seems to have basically made his, his first sort of progress through just working through um, basically clerical roles and just and just working his way up, making his, his networks as you do. Um, so he ends up working for uh, Thomas Aldley Wolsey and um 1533 he becomes um Sir Richard Rich when he's knighted uh and he also becomes Solicitor General for England and Wales now um in oh he also sorry he also knows Sir Thomas More so Thomas, he, he he grows up in the same area as Sir Thomas More and so he knows Sir Thomas More and this is going to be, become a bit of a running theme with Richie Rich because when he is required to shit on someone, he does it regardless of who they are. And this first happens notably with Sir Thomas More when he is tried for treason in 1534. And Richard Rich is the one who gives evidence against him. Um, 
he's also you you'd have heard um probably will have heard that Thomas Roy progressively has harsher and harsh, harsher conditions. So one of the things that happens is is um, for such a learned man, he gets all his books and writing materials removed from his cell. That is Richard Rich that goes in and does that. At the same time, he's supposedly having a little conversation with Moore, which he then, um, he, he then um, recites as evidence during Thomas Moore's treason trial which basically i mean you could say it gets him you know um uh done for treason but i think i mean more would, would have got done for treason anyway however richard rich was happy to give that evidence um which is basically that more had said that parliament didn't have the power to um to uh, enact the act of supremacy because it was there that it was it was equivalent to them declaring that God was not God. So this is this is the evidence that Rich gives at Moore's um, uh, treason trial. And what is is interesting is Moore's um, response to him. He's allowed to respond to him, and um, he refuted the claims strongly, saying, "You know, Rich's account. If 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 that was true, then he'd hope never to see God's face." But he starts also. Um, adding a bit of colour as to um, what he thinks of Richard Rich as a person. I mean, he says he's more concerned actually over Rich's perjury than he is of his own, um, the own danger he was in. He's that convinced that he's just lying in court. Um, um, and he asked the court to consider why if a man, if uh, in a man whose reputation he held in such little regard, would he be the one that he'd confided this thought in, which was fair enough. Um, he called him a great gamester and of no good name and character. So we know what Thomas yeah. Moore thought of this guy. Yeah. He, Richard Rich also was the chief witness at John Fisher's treason trial at around about the same time. And again, it's, it was relaying a conversation that he was supposed to have had with Fisher in his cell. However, this time Fisher does actually say, well, okay, yeah, we had that conversation, but Richard, Richard Rich told me that it was that the King had said that I could speak freely and, and this was going to be, and it wouldn't get me into any danger basically. Well, of course that wasn't true. Um, and, and he relayed the conversation and, and caveated it with, well, well, what, why do you think you should get to speak up against the law? You have, you know, effectively, you don't have free speech to speak up against the law, regardless of the fact that I told you you did. So he's he's incredibly untrustworthy. Um, so 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 Richard Rich gives evidence against Moore, and he gives evidence against Fisher. Both men are condemned to death. Both men die on Tower Hill. Um, he um. He has a big role in the. Um, well, it's it's funny. He, he, well, just just as a quick aside, when Catherine of Aragon dies, he's the man sent up to um, to catalogue all of her possessions at Kim Bolton. Just as a bit of an aside, but so he's clearly trusted, though you know. Um, in the dissolution of the monasteries, he's appointed um, chancellor of the Court of Augmentations. So he he oversaw many of the closures, and he benefited very well after the dissolution of the monasteries he gets lee's priory he gets a hundred manors in around about 100 manors just in essex he also gets the priory of saint bartholomew um the great in smithfield which he just destroys and starts again um um when um oh i didn't get a chance to go into this too much but he was chief witness once again at the treason trial of another person who he was um close to worked with took the patronage of and that was thomas cromwell himself mm. so he actually acted as a witness there now one of the things he is most famous for and rightly so um in terms of his notoriety as a complete and utter evil vile reprobate is the um the torture of anne askew at the tower of london um in 1546 so Anne Askew was a Protestant um, preacher. She was unpopular, not just for her beliefs, but she's a woman. She's preaching, and she divorces her first wife because he's uh, wife. Sorry, divorces. They were very progressive. It's like divorces her first <laughs> husband because he is he, he's he's abusive and, and horrible. So she's done all these things. So she's 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 
she doesn't um she's not scared easily clearly this this woman she is a formidable force and um she's detained in the tower of london she's questioned what they want to know is who are the people who have the same beliefs as her who does she know who has the same beliefs as her because they believe there are um there are people at court women women at court including the queen catherine par who share these protestant beliefs remembering that henry doesn't ever actually become a protestant mm. he is catholic he doesn't want this uncontrolled reformation that's that's not his bag so um <clears throat> She's actually bailed after a few days, and she but she is brought back into the tower in June. She's cross-examined for two days. Um, um, there's quite a few um, of the councillors involved, um, Thomas Risley, Stephen Gardner, John Dudley, William Padgett, and they want this confession. They want to hear that Catherine Parr is, um, is part of this court circle. Um, so... Um, she's just she just does, she's not going to give up any names she just doesn't give up any names what happens next is not some i don't actually know how far to go into what happens next because um it quite it's quite detailed and gruesome of and askew's own account of what happens so if you don't want to hear this next bit forewarned maybe just mute for a little while this is, this is a no eating portion definitely oh, a, no a no eating, eating portion, portion. Um, if you're eating, yes. stop yeah. eating yeah. or stop watching until you've finished um. eating. <laughs> so they, they, they come to her cell around about 10 o'clock in the morning and they take her down to a, uh, a room in the bottom of the White Tower, probably around about where the gift shop is now, which is <laughs> interesting thought. <laughs> and they show her the rack and they say, tell us the names. Just tell us the names. And she says, no, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the names. So they get her to strip just to her shift. And they ask her, well, she, it says she, she climbs onto the rack. I don't know how willingly or whether they put her on. And, and she's tied to the rack. So you're tied wrists and ankles. And they, they pull each of the, um, the wheels. And she ends up by the tension of the ropes on her ankles and, and, and wrists five inches or so above the bed. She's no longer touching the bed. She still will not give up the names. Um, <clears throat> she's, she faints through, from the pain. They revive her. They do that twice. At this point, um, the lieutenant of the tower, who, Kat, you'll be able to tell me, because I, I found two different names. It was either Anthony um, Nivett or Edmund um, Walsingham. I don't know which one it was. But anyway, the lieutenant of the tower. I've got both names in different accounts. Interesting. Yeah, he ref well, Walsingham's definitely involved. He's definitely Walsingham's involved at the fall of Catherine Howard. Yeah, Nivet's also a name. I, I need to figure out if he come to four after. Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was Nivet, and I'll, I'll then I found I found another account with it. But so the but the lieutenant of the tower refuses to have any more involvement. He actually goes requests a audience with Henry and basically asks for a pardon because he's he, he did not want to continue with what happens next because they continue to try and get her to talk um by racking her um yeah so 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 the lieutenant tower will have nothing more to do with it richard rich and actually risley will continue to rack her themselves to the point that she is dislocated in the hips the shoulders, the elbows, and the knees. She is ruined, and they still do not get a confession out of her. But the ability to treat a human being um, in this in this way is 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 one of the things, probably the biggest thing that Richie Rich is Richie Rich Richard Rich is known for because it is absolutely abhorrent. Um, so she is in such a state. She is still executed. She's still found guilty of whatever and executed treason. She's obviously in Fox's Book of Martyrs. And um, she cannot even walk to the um, to her place of execution. <clears throat> she has to be tied. Well, they, they would be tied to the stake, but she has to be tied up to the stake because she cannot walk. 
and that is um i think probably the biggest thing he is um he's known for he's he also um a little later is actively involved in the examination of cool pepper oh sorry before this was was actively involved in the in the examinations of cool pepper and derham as well so wherever there is a confession required right through from well right through henry the eighth's reign so right through from the first sort of major um trials for treason of moore and fisher right through to looking for evidence for a potential takedown of Catherine Parr, um, Henry's final queen, Richard Rich is there and willing to be involved. Wowie, mm. mm. wowie. Um, I saw a question about um, was torture illegal? Yep. Torture, torture was illegal. And also, I've, I've, I'm often asked why they do public executions. And that is about seeing justice done. And as barbaric as they may be, um, the idea that somebody has been been racked to the point or, or tortured, if visible signs of torture are commented upon as being a sign of, of a lack of that justice happening. Um, so it is, and, and Philippa, you were saying about how she, she went on, she was convicted. She was already convicted when they tortured her. So she was already condemned to die as a heretic. So this is not, it, it is, it, the, the reasons why her racking is, I mean, torture is illegal, but the reason why hers is particularly bad is because she's a woman. She's a gentle woman. She's gently born. She um, is already condemned. All of that should have rendered her exempt from torture. And I just want to point out, that we have known since before this that you don't have to lay a finger on somebody to get them to talk. All you have to do is stop them sleeping. And they know how to do that. This was unnecessary. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely unnecessary. And what a day. I mean, <sighs> to the point where someone's actually walked out the room and said, I'm who's used to seeing this, uh, or, you know, this, mm. and said, I am not taking I'm, part I'm in this call. anymore. Yeah. I will take the king's wrath. Yeah. I will go to him now and say, I'm sorry, I can't have anything to do with this. That's, yeah. So, pretty nasty man. Say this, Suzanne says, yeah. Yeah, the ability to dehumanise, and I think we'll probably come back to that, is, yeah. is strong with this man. Mm. Who probably... I feel a little bit unwell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry about that. I hope no one was eating. So, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, also this sort of comments. I think it's a bit of a delay on Instagram. Okay, so on a slightly different vein, coming in now, before we come on to the next part, so leaving you reading slightly with that, unfortunately. So do take a moment if you need to. But we're coming on to Word of the Week. Word, word of the of Week, week word, word of the Week, Word of the Week. Word, and it's Philippa again with happier news this time. Um, it, hasn't got, <laughs> it feels like we should be cheerful now. Although, actually, I know what... <laughs> I know what your word of the week is, but I just want to have, like clarify that we are moving off of racking and torture. Yeah, we your, are moving off of racking of the week. and torture. Although you might think we haven't when you tell when you tell us what the word of the well, week it's, is. Well, it's 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 yeah. a phrase, and it's a phrase that I used in a conversation with Kat and Catherine. I sent them a picture <laughs> of my new garden furniture, right, which has which a is table. Very fancy. Which is nice. It has a table, and in the middle of the table, it has a like trough, metal trough. If um, yeah, that you um, that you put ice in and you stick your drinks in. So I wrote, I I sent a picture of this to the girls and said, um, "What do you think?" Um, using this in anger at the weekend because it's just empty. So I was using this in anger at the weekend, and cats like. Are you going to violently assault somebody with it? <laughs> because sign me up. I mean, if we're on a, if we're on a rock, let me know. I will drop. I have car. We'll travel. Um, who are we fighting? Yeah. But no. <laughs> so this was this confused everybody because and uh, this is a phrase that I've I just I didn't know it was that obscure. But yeah. So if you're going to use something in anger, 
you're basically using it it's not a practice run people it's a re- <laughs> it's for real <laughs> it's not a practice run for my champagne pocket so I was trying to find where it came from because I was thinking, well, I've I've just used it for ages. It might be military. So, um, you know, the difference between using uh, firing shots for practice and firing shots in anger, you're, you know, it's no longer a practice. You're actually aiming to to kill. So you're using shots, uh, you know, you're using, yeah, you're shooting in anger. You're shooting to yeah, kill just, as opposed oh, to well, practice. So, I've never heard um, it. No, I want, I want to know if anybody, if anybody in the um, comments, if you've heard that phrase that you're going to use something in anger to mean that you're going to use it for real, for real, um, then please put it in the comment. But also, could you put in the comment where you're from? Yeah, yeah, because me and Kat were like, "Is it a northern? Is thing? this is this north <laughs> of the Watford Gap?" Thing? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> so we'll have a look and see if that so a lot of people say they've never heard of it before is it maybe a Philippa's household (laughs) (laughs) maybe I just made it up did you let's all adopt it it now I don't know oh hang on hang on Um, Dawn has heard of it and she is from Newcastle upon Tyne so that's north north. yeah maybe it's that's a big boy north oh hang on French Canada oh North Wales, now living in Scotland. Um, Raven, the word is to use something in anger to mean that you're going to use it for yeah, real. Yeah, rather for than real. a practice run. Sort of. Yeah. Oh, Canadian. We're seeing Northern Ireland. Mm. So people have heard it. We're seeing Canada, Northern Ireland, Newcastle, North Wales. So it's just, I think it's, it's just outside of the keyhole of England. Southport, Lancashire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no we're not guessing it. We're, we're Raven. We are. We are. We know what it means. We are asking. Have you heard that phrase? And I'm interested as to where you're from because we think it's a northern thing. But it could. It's clearly not just a northern thing. It's perhaps just a not a keyhole of England thing. Yeah. Well, I don't know what I mean by the keyhole of England. I mean M25 down to Brighton. Everything else, dragons. And apparently <laughs> using things in anger. Although I just saw somebody say, Ted says, I've heard it used, I'm from Leicestershire. I'm not from Leicestershire, but I'm in Leicestershire. That's and it's north. Um, well, it's north of, of it, yeah, I was going to say, it's north of where I was born. So there we um, go. Yeah. Someone else said, I think there they were go. in the yeah. southwest somewhere further up as well. So thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you so much, sticker. Teresa. Oh, wow, Teresa. Specific. Yes, thank you. Thank Aww, you so much. You are very kind to us. Yeah, very kind. Because we thank know you. we need therapy and health and stuff. And a Winnebago to torture you in, Catherine. Yeah. Somebody, who was it? Somebody shared a thing. I don't know if you guys saw it. It was a very British problems meme about you could. Oh, yeah, I did. I shared that. <laughs> <laughs> sitting in sitting in a lovely warm bath and you could pretend that you're sitting in a great big cup of tea and that you were a biscuit and then all I could think of was soggy biscuit. Soggy biscuit. I, it did have it did have a dual had meaning, which is why I shared it. I thought, <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that. Le soggy biscuit. Dark. Oh, that classic. If only we still had that. That was amazing. Amazing. Um, um, oh, okay. Too okay. soon for torture jokes, Kat. What torture jokes did I do? Did I do a torture oh, joke? Oh, the Winnebago. Torturing Catherine. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Apologies. I'm just, I'm just, I just threaten Catherine with so frequently that I forget about <laughs> doing it. It's it like, just, it's off like the tongue now. I just, I just look at her face and go, right, I've got to threaten her. Uh, that's how she knows I love her. Just mild, aggressive violence towards Catherine. Um, Hang on, can aggressive be violence be both aggressive and mild at the same time? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll violence you gently, and you know you'll love it. That's your kink, you little pervert. <laughs> gentle violence. Bit of gent, bit of gentle, gentle violence. Um, <laughs> should we talk? Should we talk more about this absolute shit bag? Yeah, I can't believe. Here's the problem. I've got his like family life and legacy bit, and that's the bit where he's not an arsehole. Um, but it's probably a good thing because otherwise, I probably, I almost certainly would have burst a blood vessel in my eye talking about this tosser. And Chubby Freddy <clears throat> Cat, just don't torture her in anger. Beautifully used. Beautifully used. 
Mm. Um, yeah, not for real, for real. Just a Tara, it's cover. not even aggressive anymore. It's love, Catherine. They love you aggressively. Yeah, it's a little love tap with a Winnebago. <laughs> you had to lower her down in cold blood. It was out of love. Oh, snuggy snug. Love you, love. <laughs> hey, did I mention torture? God, this says so much about that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realise I'd Did done you it. Even realise that you'd done it. Threatening nope. me with mindless how... violence has now just got to a point where no one even notices it anymore. It's desensit- it's literally how easy it desensitisation. Desensitisation, that's what that is. Yeah. So yeah, well. you know. And I'd say that there's hundreds of people out there that watch this and they're all like, yeah, go on, do it. <laughs> One of us, one of us, one of us, one of us. Right, right. Um, a bit more Richard Rich. So, um, I yeah, kind Richie, of um, sort of Philip has obviously talked about a lot of the things that happened in, like, when we see the things, big events happening, big names being taken down in the reign of Henry the Eighth. Um, but Richard Rich decided to live for quite a fair amount of time, sadly. Um, <laughs> and we see him come through um, the reigns of the Tudor monarchs afterwards. Um, he did die during the reign of Elizabeth I, so we don't see him come all the way to the end of the Tudor period. But we do see a lot more of the similar sorts of behaviour. Basically, it, it, lots of changing of allegiance, lots of w- looking where the wind's blowing. And on one hand, I, you know, I, I try to be generous in the interests of balance and say, well, you know, y- y- you have to protect yourself. You have to be a pragmatist. You have to sort of think, well, you know, if, if I don't do this, or you could be a bell end, and he chose to be a bell end. Oh, yes. There is an element of pragmatism about it. I mean, sometimes you have to nod in all the right places, don't you? So you don't get your head cut off. But mm. you know, so um, I've I've kind of looked here and I, I've gone through um, the the rest of the Tudor monarchs that Rich was still around during the time. So Edward. So this was obviously Henry the Eighth dies. Um. On the 28th of January, 1547, as you probably know. And Rich was made an assistant executor of Henry's will, and he was granted the title Baron Rich of Lees, which he was actually then officially granted and given. So Henry wanted this on the 26th of February that, that same year. He also received £200, um, lots of grants of land. And as Philip has already mentioned, he'd done very well in terms of that out of the dissolution of the monastery. So he's doing pretty well at this point. And he was also given to take a fairly notable role in Edward's christening, Edward's christening as well. Christening. No, coronation was in fact the Mm. word I was looking for. It began with C and it was a fairly long word. So you've got to let me off. I'm scared because of all the threats against me. I'm working on the edge here, people. You're all right. Buckle up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look up what two hundred pounds in fifteen forty seven would be worth in today's money. Carry on. Okay. <clears throat> right. Okay. So in March again, no, it's the same year, March fifteen forty seven. He succeeded. Now we're saying we're we going with Risley, right? Mm. Risley. 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 Yeah. Risley. Risley. Call me Risley. Yeah. If you've, if you've read um. um Paul um, succeeds Risley as Chancellor. And how he gets that gig is you've got um, Somerset as protector, Edward Seymour as protector of the young king. And um, he wants rid of, of Risley. And so he's like, well, you know, I'll help you get rid of him and then I can be Chancellor. And it's, Edward Seymour goes, yeah, all right then. So they set about and they manage to get rid of Risley. But Risley can also be, as Philippa has mentioned, a bit of a bell end. A bell end. Mm. So you know it's not mm. it's not the world's greatest loss necessarily, but then you're just replacing one crescent with another one. So you know, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, um, now so he helped in this at this point there he becomes chancellor. Um, he doesn't keep this forever. We'll come back to that in a moment. But obviously this is, this is a big gig. He's a very important guy. He's going to be well rewarded for it. He's got a lot of power and influence. Now just just a little pause. Just one little pause. I've just currently converted it. Two hundred pounds in fifteen fifty, so close. Um, in twenty seventeen, money is fifty four thousand nine hundred thirty nine pounds and seventy four pence. It okay. would buy you forty two horses. I don't want any horses. It, it would buy you one hundred and sixty cues. Better, and it would it would it would be the way 
years of a skilled tradesman for 6,666 days. Sorry, just thought I'd throw that in. That's the so kind of money he's making. Wants to pay me that amount of money to execute their will. Then I'll, I'll do that. I'll do it. I'll get do it. it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, what a bargain. New yes. Business, new business idea. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, if, if you look sort of through Rich's career, whatever else he does, he is essentially still a Catholic at heart, but he jumped on the bandwagon and he supports all of Somerset's um, policies with regard to the church and religion and so forth. Because obviously, you know, Edward VI, um, as King Somerset's nephew, was a raging Protestant. And we, we see this, this theme. So, of course, he's going to go in. So despite his own personal preferences, He's going to turn and he supports all um, Somerset's policies, reforms on the church matters. And also he assists his um, Somerset in the persecution of his brother, Thomas Seymour. Now, we also don't like Thomas Seymour very much, do we? No, we all it's quite a few bad ends at the Tudor court, to be <laughs> fair. Yes. Yes. To, say, yeah. to say that Richard Rich was one of the worst is bad. There's some pretty stiff competition. Um so yeah, so he also helps him take down his brother as well, Thomas Seymour. So that's that's lovely. Um, so he was the one, Richard Rich, who drew up the articles of treason against Thomas Seymour and presented them to the to the, the young king. So this is about your uncle, and he was one of the people that basically signed off the on the execution warrant. Um, Richard Rich was. So there we go. Um, right. However. It uncharacteristically, in October 1549, he turned against Somerset. No. What what gets me is you listen to all of these that you've already heard of what you're going to hear coming up. It says, how did I, how did he ever get anybody to trust him? Like, was he was he drugging people, hypnotizing them? Did he have lots of blackmail material? There must have been something going on here because this dude, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's his timing. Different. I think it's his timing. He only turns when they're already down. And I think that's the thing is that everyone everyone is delusional enough to think that it will never, never be, be them. them. They will always be in the ascendancy. Um, yeah. But equally, Richard Rich is the scorpion in the scorpion and the frog story. Like, he, he will sting you. It's in his nature. Mm-hmm. Debbie says, Catherine doesn't like horses. Debbie, I don't like horses. We've, we have, Debbie, we noted that. They're evil. Another they? idea. More ideas. Well, they're evil when they smell at both ends. You're not getting me on a horse. You're not getting me on a horse. <sighs> Genuinely, you're not getting me on a horse. You it say will, that it, now. I've been, I've been, invest, I've been investigating um, where I can learn some historical horse riding. I oh, want to learn side saddle. You have a lovely, Ooh, like lovely, them. lovely time. Oh, let me know. Yeah, and I will see you when you get back because I ain't even going down to watch that. Oh, I'd like to have a go at that as well. Right, actually, right, well, we'll do it together. I would like that. Well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not even going. And, and no, just no, no. You can hold the coats. You can come and just hold the coats. <laughs> <laughs> but like somebody at Disney, you can't go on yeah. the ride. Yeah, yeah you can't go on the ride. Yeah. Yeah, you can hold the pack ups, yeah. and um... it will smell of horse because horses fucking stink. <laughs> anyway, yes. So he turns away. So what happens is, is that there's a crisis erupted between John Dudley, um, Northumberland, and him and, and Somerset kind of fall out, and, and Richard Rick goes, "Oh, I think I'm going to pile up with him over here with this Northumberland guy." So basically, what happens is John Dudley is Lady Jane Grey's father, and in-law. um, oh, in-law, and then there's obviously oh, now you can argue whether or not you want to, this is a whole other debate as to whether or not Dudley made, persuaded, forced um, Edward to put Lady Jane Grey on the throne. Some people believe he did. Some people say that he didn't. Whether he did or he didn't, Edward decides that he is going to name Lady Jane Grey as his successor. And um, bit, bit pally there now with Northumberland. Uh, Richard, which is like, yeah, I'm going to get behind this. This is all good. I, you know, when when the time comes, it's probably going to be a bit of trouble. So I will raise my men and I will come out in support of Jane. So everybody's on that side of things is like pucker. This this this, this is good stuff. <laughs> okay, so you'll be massively unsurprised to hear that when the time comes and he goes, yeah, no, and none of this support he suggests. Firstly, it doesn't even materialise. But then secondly, not only does he not rock up with the men he's supposed to rock up with, he turns around and goes, yeah, I'm, I'm coming out for Mary now, actually. 
as it goes. So he kind of had this relationship with Northumberland, but then he narrowly escaped prison. People imagine he didn't go to prison again. How is he getting away with this stuff? Because he decided that Somerset, <clears throat> Somerset at this point was in the tower. And he decided that he was going to reach out to Somerset and try and be friends with him. So he writes him a letter, but being a little bit careless, he just addresses it to the Duke. So his servant, who must have been thick as shit, decides that he meant the Duke of Norfolk. Mm -mm. Why? Why? Well, exactly. There is no way that that not thick as shit. Exactly. There's not no thick way. As shit. Anyone, Someone else could There's no way anyone is that stupid. The Duke mm -hmm. of Norfolk, so Thomas Howard, third Duke of Norfolk, is bit, stays in the Tower as a prisoner for the entire reign of Edward the Sixth. So there is no plausible reason, unless they've been long time besties or something, for Richard Rich to be sending a note to Thomas Howard, third Duke of Norfolk. So this, this is all. But anyway, so this gets turned around. That he is trying to Richard Rich is trying to commit acts of treason against Northumberland. People expect him to be put into prison, but he's not because he goes to the king, he pretends he's ill, and he resides his chancellorship. So this possibly kind of like saves him. So he's prepared to jack in the decent job because somehow or another, either he's tripped himself up or he's been a little bit set up. But once again, he manages to to save his own neck. Um, Somerset um, is executed in 1552 on charges of conspiracy and it's Richard Rich that basically goes to the mayor and the alderman and says oh well here's all the list of all the reasons why um, Somerset quite while Edward Seymour was um, running against the protectorate here's all his abuses of power I'm bringing them to show them to you whilst you're trying to write to him apparently and be mates with him so there we go that that's how sort of those relationships come to an end. Mm. So um, Edward dies. He turns out for Mary, does old Richard. And in fact, Mary comes and stays with him and his wife for a little while at their home. But, but before Mary, like literally after Mary pronounces herself queen a couple of days or so later, he stays with them at their place. She stays with them at their home in Wanstead before she makes her entrance into London as queen. And uh, they get on very well. It's all very lovely. He, at this point, she does make him agree to relinquish back some of the lands that he uh, profited from during the dissolution. And I suppose at that point, with the new queen sat in his in his dining room, he probably didn't have much choice, really, did he? So he does agree to that. So you think, but he wasn't actually very nice to Mary um, during the reign of Edward, where he was very much being very Protestanty. Um, there came a point where where Mary was still very publicly um, taking mass and Edward had kind of put up with it for want of a better expression for a while. But they were really starting to crack down on this. And they'd said to Mary, you need to stop doing this so publicly. Or then just you need to stop doing it. And Mary was like, no, 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 no. All of the no. No, not having any of it. So there was a delegation of people with whom Rich was meant to be one. But then he ended up, this came into the period where he resigned the chancellorship where they were going to literally go down to Mary and have it out with her and like say, you are not doing this, we have bought you a letter and you're going to do as you're told. But that never actually happened. But, you know, you see this, he was involved um, um, with, um, was it with, uh, God, who are those two people that he was involved in with, with, with talking against that were very prominent Catholics? Bonner and... Um, Yes, it'll come back to me. Anyway, so he'd been, you know, he'd, he'd been taking, you know, there were some real major Catholic players that he'd been involved in speaking against, persecuting during, although their names will come back to me in a minute. You'll recognise their names when you hear them, um, during Edward's reign. And these were people that were very popular with Mary um, and that she thought a great deal of. So, but, so you'd think that when Mary came into power, I can only assume that because he stepped out for her at the last minute like that and and sort of I, that maybe that's why she decided that she wasn't going to give him a hard time and he probably played a very clever line with how he presented his uh, religious sympathies during her reign so these are the only reasons that uh, and maybe he was very good um at his work and so forth but you know you really think with mary with the sort of temperament we often see mary exhibit the fact that, you know, she, he exhibited some of these behaviours against her 
and some of her, like, you know, her close allies during her brother's reign, you really would think that, that, that as, as a bare minimum, she'd kind of, like, send him into obscurity somewhere and keep a bit of a close eye on him. But she seems, like, not that bothered, really. So he's, he's, he's sort of pulled this off again. He's managed mm. to do it. Um, yeah. And he's even around and being involved in the fact that Cranmer gets sent down to the tower for being, you know, for committing acts of treason against the Queen. So, again, another big name. He's in the mix for all taking down all these major players. Um, so, right. Um, yeah, oh, Stephen Gardner and Edmund Bonner. Those were the two I was trying okay. to think of. He was involved in. And Edward Bonner in particular, he was, he was a real gets he was really into taking down the protestants and like nastily he really really got his teeth into it you know he, he was one for a bit of a, a bit of protestant sort of battering literally um i th i think it, the jane gray thing was the big thing that maybe swung it for him i don't know it's the only if anyone can think of any other reason why that's even vaguely viable, then please let me know because I'm struggling. Um, so um, Philippa mentioned earlier his associations with Essex. In Essex, he started to turn um, Essex back to the true faith, the true religion, for the, the Catholicism for Mary. And he became one of her most active persecutors in that region and did some pretty horrible stuff, as I'm sure you can imagine, because that's him. Um, some good bits. <laughs> During her reign, he founded a chaplaincy with the provision of singing muses and dirges and ringing bells in Felsted Church. And that's quite a trendy thing to do, wasn't it? Stuff like that. Um, it also gave an allowance of herrings to three parishes. Lovely. And this transferred to the school he founded in six, uh, 1564, which of course after Mary, Mary died, the Felsted School and Associated Arms Houses in Essex. And it was primarily for children born on the founders' manners, um, teaching Latin, Greek, and divinity. Um, uh, now, in November 1557, Mary declared, declared war with France because she was married to that idiot Philip of Spain. And as a result, she sort of stepped up. So, of course, um, he's all involved with that as well. He's all in all over that as well. And likes a good war. Um, yeah, he and he also helped Mary to... Um, he, he did help to sort of resuscitate some of the monasteries a little bit. He stepped in, so that may have been seen as a good thing by some people, I suppose. And in 1555, he granted her the remains of the monastery of St. Bolt Bartholomew, where she set up Blackfriars. So he, he kind of comes into his own. Now, towards the end of Mary's reign, he's starting to wind down a little bit how much he is at court and all things like that. We, we do see him at some of the Privy Council meetings. He's involved in some some fairly big bits and pieces in, in Mary's reign on and off. Um, we, we see him present at various different things. When it comes to Elizabeth's reign, so Mary passes away, 17th of November, 1558. And although he was pretty much retired from court, he was, his services were still called on. He was called on to help escort Elizabeth into London, to accompany her into London. He served on, <laughs> he, um, Having given them some of back to some of them himself, he then served on a commission to look into the grants of land made under Mary, some of which were the ones he'd had to give back to her. Um, he did not support Elizabeth's act of uniformity. So that's a little bit uncharacteristic. Normally, he would just do whatever he needed to do to make sure he was right up the arse of the person concerned. But he did not support her act of uniformity. He was not on Elizabeth's Privy Council either. So I think maybe she was a little bit more wary of him perhaps and but that really just have been because of the, the, the element of religion the fact that her sister did trust him probably was enough at that point to make her think eh. she could probably have watched him on the sidelines for such yeah, a long time by that point as well keep him around so i can kind of mm. keep a bit of an eye on him but don't let him get like sometimes you have to keep an eye on somebody don't you like there's a few people i know we've discussed this who we know the things they're up to but i pretend that they've fooled me and yeah. I can keep an eye on them. <laughs> if you think it's oh, not yeah. you, it probably is. Um, none of you. Well, I don't think so. I don't know. We tell you everything anyway, so. Yeah, yeah they do. I mean, you lot in the audience. Oh, but yeah. maybe. But maybe. But maybe. Yeah, we all tell each other everything anyway, so. <laughs> We've got to be friends forever now because we all know too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. The only time, the only thing... 
1566, though, I will say, he was summoned to discuss the question of Queen Elizabeth's marriage proposals and you know, the fact that we're not sure we're married. So that was obviously something I would say where his viewpoint was considered important. That's obviously, there was legal aspects to that, wasn't it? It was, may have been why he was called up for it. But by that time, he kind of mellowed quite a lot. He hadn't been running around beating up, murdering and torturing people for a while. He was getting a bit past it. Anyway, did the world a favour. And died at Rochford in Essex on the 12th of June, 1567. Um, I did. I couldn't get the party poppers, otherwise I'd have bought one out. And was buried mm -hmm. at Felsted Church. Just a little bit about his children. Now, there seems to be a bit of a... I'm going to do the children, though. Babe. Okay, but I, I was just... Um, there were a lot. There were a lot. But a couple of them and the grandchildren, pretty interesting, actually. Did some pretty interesting stuff. So, so there's Richard Rich's history for the potty, the remains of the Tudor dynasty and the lots of changey abouty stuff and the being mean to people. There were lots of other people, mean people in the mix, which possibly doesn't help. Misery loves company and all of that business. So, mm. but you could just see for what Philip built on, you know, it was it was more, I mean, the, the torture of Anne Askew was for want of a, a less awful expression, a highlight of his career. But you see the same themes just running through this man's actions and behaviours and just mm -hmm. just giving zero fucks. Really. <laughs> yes. Here lies Richard Rich. He gave zero fucks. It mm. sounds like... That's actually what's on his grave. I looked it up. Findagrave.com. Yeah. Findagrave.com. Yeah. Didn't give a shit. Here um, lies Richard Rich. Didn't give a fuck. I think uh, it, sounds, it sounds a bit like he was... He had all the... Um, the traits of Thomas Cromwell in, you know, administrative administrative capability and cruelty, but he was he endured. It's really it's it sounds like he is probably. I think maybe other than the Askew um, event, I don't know whether we know about him so much. And yet, it sounds like he was well utilized. He was he had his fingers. Mm in the mix all the time mm -hmm. yeah that, that yeah. i think the anastasia one was just so shocking that that's for the mm. various different reasons that it stands out um but, but makes him was up to all otherwise he would just be another like name in the mix of the names you know but yeah. actually when you think yeah. about it, he was there all the time yeah, yeah. but then but, equally yeah. there's there's more to it though because we we see we actually think about and discuss him as being exceptionally bad and we don't lump him in with Risley for that. Mm. Like, obviously, he's Risley's there for the Anne Askew, but mm. there is something about Richard Rich that makes that that becomes there's an exceptionalism there. Um, yeah. So I think I mean I think you're right that the Anne Askew thing does. Um, but I I do also think that he is shitty enough that we would probably still know about him. Um, mm. I'm going to talk a little bit about. I think I'm going to add in some of my, my ideas about his motivations as I discuss the, the uh, legacy bits. Mm. I reckon. Right, but now, before the legacy mm. bits, it's time. Catherine, get it. It's time. And yes, you do have to put it over your face. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean. The fact that someone even made these in the first place. Right, hang on. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. For the widows of Lancaster. <laughs> to address your concerns <laughs> from our past problems post bag. It even smells pee, pee, a bit pee. weird. Yeah, it's starting to get a smell You're... there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's got a waft. It's got a waft. Got a waft. I don't like it. We're right, going to get them out one day. There's going to be moths flying out of <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. You're fine. Right. Dear wise and merry widows of Lancaster. Merry widows. Today I name my firstborn son and future king and emperor, God willing. I must give him a name or ten. And I'm considering including Charles, Philip, Arthur, and George in the mix. Of course, this could just be the new anesthesia mix talking. And I found myself thinking I should take advice on the subject from wise and knowledgeable ladies familiar with concerns of monarchy mm. without a stake in the name chosen. Mm. Mummy and Philippe have quite exhausted me with such input. As you know, the Georges were once something of a royal rose gallery. 
my father and even his father equipped the crown quite credibly. Yet I do have concerns over naming my dear boy for kings who've lost their heads, both with inappropriate mm. women and one literally. Could you supply me with some of history's cursed names in monarchy and perhaps advise me over the choices I must make for this modern king that also carries the traditions of those earlier centuries forward with it? Are their names so gittish that they simply have no place in monarchy any longer? With sincere wow. thanks and the glow of saintly Madonna goodness. Well, she's avoided John there. I think that was a good idea. I don't think John was in John's there. Good, was good, John's yeah, a avoid. good, yeah, avoid. Yeah. yeah. Richard. Richards have tended to get a bad rep. Yeah. For yeah. good reason. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, it's been a few Henry gets, let's be honest. Mm. Some, well, yeah, there was a lot of Henry's. Henry's. He did stop. So, although we did, he did call his first son Henry, but obviously, sadly. Now, um, you see, yes. there are also names that are sort of very commonly used. If you want to have lots of long names, then, mm. you know, if you're going to have a big string of names, then that gives you all, all, all sorts of possibilities. But then some Options. names are very common. For example, you don't want to go with Thomas. Very common. Mm. Nasty. Not like, you know. I mean, Edward David Thomas has is the... In, the, in the crowd. We 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 love your name. Sorry, no, but just like you know, if you were if you were alive in Tudor England, you were called Thomas. Mostly. Mm. I mean, if Edward goes girl, right back to Edward, Edward goes right back to pre Norman days, and then yes. comes out. So that one, I was that one say even, that. Yeah, that one even spans I mean, the various epochs. Yeah, like all of the names that are being suggested there are the names of our colonial oppressors, the Norman <laughs> French. Um, so, which makes yeah. a great choice. Yeah, William. So, I like William. William's a lovely. I, name. I think. I think. Let's stop with the the, the Actually, you know the reason. Yeah. I mean, for goodness' sake, Plainish. the reason. I put it back down. Put it back right. down. Put it. Down. Yeah. I mean, for goodness' sake, the reason why it's a cow in the field and beef on the plate is because the the native population the oppressed norman victims they had to farm it while the normans had to got Let to it. eat it so it's a cow in the field and it's beef or birth on the plate so i think no williams no roberts none of that no, 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 pre french <laughs> i want a sigismund oh i like that yeah. I want an Ethelred. Yes, yeah. also. Well, an Uhtred. I want an I want, Oh, we can get an Uhtred. Oh, I want an Uhtred. I mean, that's that's a bit, isn't that a bit Viking? Yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep it Anglo Saxon. Yeah. Um, well, I well, want an Uhtred. The other with Ethelred is you've got Ethelred the Unready. That's a little well, bit of a negative connotation with that one. That's true. Yeah. But if you're yeah, having a lot, you could maybe put that one near the end. Mm. Yeah. But no, Uhtred might. I think Uhtred, there was a Lord Uhtred. I mean, he was a he was a um, a side switcher and quickly got by the Danes. But yeah, in mm. real in in it, yes, a Edward, a Edmund, indeed. I do think Edward's a good one because mm. there've been a couple of questionable, slightly questionable ones. But you know, you you go Edward the first, Edward Edward's a good third, choice. It, you know, it conjures up this kind of. Big kingly yeah. kingness. Edgar the Peaceful, yes. Edgar the Peaceful, who Edgar's was good. Edgar's good. Yeah. Been not peaceful, but yes. Edgar, Edgar, that's a good one. I like Arthur. Oh, that Avoid. never works Just out. Never. Hmm. Avoid. Edgar. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> Joe. Gary. No, not Gary. Um, Stephen. St oh, Stephen. no, no. Not Stephen. Stephen. No, Stephen. No. I do you know what I think they that there's let's go what about um like a like a weird how about hug? Max Irons <laughs> yeah Just when in doubt Matt, when in doubt chill out <laughs> chill out what about like a, a a weird a weird Bible name that's hardly ever used or myth a weird myth name let's go that's Greek or something let's go let's go yeah what about like Oedipus <laughs> oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> Hector, uh, Paris. Oh, Hector. Hector. I like Hector. 
Yeah. 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 Good job they have so many names. Oh. There you go. Pick pick what you like there. Yeah, we've given Anglo-Saxon lots of ideas, we reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want at least one Anglo-Saxon one. You maybe yeah. want something that's like a little bit more modern, like Brett or something. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. So, or no, Tanqueray. 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 Or, I don't know, um, Clytemnestra or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe there's something biblical, but like Cain or something. <laughs> uh, well, so, so let, let, okay, okay, ladies, let's pick four and put them together in a name. Okay, well, we've okay. Got Edward, Eth, Eth, Edward, Ethelstan. Ethelstan. Oh, Ethelstan, that was another one, yeah, lovely. Yeah. Are we saying Uhtred? Hector, Uhtred. Nice. There you go. Nice. Merry Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I mean, <laughs> uh, if, if someone doesn't like that, then there's clearly something wrong no with taste. them. If they've got no taste, and they're probably called no something taste. really, really boring. And so they're just jealous. Indeed, jelly, jelly. It, it will be the only the only thing I would say is it's going to be real ball eight put, filling in their passport um, forms when they're a bit older. This is a royal person. They have well, other people's hands for those ladies. That's true. That's true. So in which case, well, that everyone's yeah. a winner then. Indeed, everyone's a winner, baby. Thank you, Alberta. Um, Alberta, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Can right. I take this off now? You may. Okay. I'll allow it. The way you gasp there is erotic, <sighs> frankly. <laughs> erotic. So. Right. We, 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 can I just say, right, time. can I just say, if I mum pick first, right, if you two don't show up to my funeral wearing these, I'm going to come back and haunt you. <laughs> oh, babe, don't worry. <laughs> we'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> oh my goodness oh imagine? my god yeah you guys are doing my eulogy <sighs> yeah I think I'm yeah. going to die we've decided first, we had so. to cut half of this out if you want to read it we've yeah. signed it, we've, sorry we've sealed it and it will be released in a hundred years time <laughs> yeah I think I'm going to die first so you best think about that oh good god alright I'll start writing you'll <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> be alright I mean, okay. not, not so I, very soon, but of the three of us, I'm going to die first. So I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Cat's like, Put your what? witch tits away. <laughs> Put your witch tits away. Just stop it. I'm not a witch! <laughs> wow. Wow. Until I dunk you in water, I'm not going to know. Yeah, so that's true. If you, hold me dip un- you hold me underneath. You're much stronger than me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to tie your hands and feet and chuck you in like they used to in the olden days. I'm going to test if you're a witch. Sorry. Do you float or do you sink? Great. Is it because you're closer to hell, Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> I think my journey downstairs has been on the cards for a long while. But on the plus side, at least it's warm. <laughs> yeah, which it's not I'm today. Cold. I am cold. I have actually got a hot water bottle. <laughs> it's unbelievable. With July and it's cold. Yeah, see, it's not just me. I, I expected Philippa to mock me mercilessly when I said that. And she was like, no, it's cold. No, it's cold. It is cold. I give my seal of approval on that message. Thank you very much. I yeah. do think this means that we need to buy had hoodies soon. Oh, yeah, we probably should. Well, as soon as I've lost my T-shirt as well, I may as well go for the, go for the next lot of merch. <laughs> next lot of merch. Yeah. Next and no one will realise. No one will know. Merch, merch. Um, so we have we 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 always say we're going to try and stick to an hour, but here we are. Sorry, who are hey, you? So I'm going to. It's an hour somewhere else in the universe. Sorry, I've started you off. Sorry, Raven. Raven has been spaced as long as it's been foretold. Because <laughs> I'm not a psychopath, so I do yawn. Other people yawn. That's the test, apparently. Is it? Okie pokes. So um, let's let's go back to come forward. Let's talk about let's talk about the family lamb of um, mm. Richard Rich. So. As we said at the beginning, we don't know a lot about him, but in terms of family, it's suggested that he may have come or been connected to uh, another family with the surname Rich. They belonged to the Mercer's company. So that's that potentially brings with it some affluence. It also brings with it the kinds of connections that get a person uh, into a guild perhaps also into a position where they can go to the middle temple. So 
those family connections could have been what place Richard in a position to uh, get the opportunities that he does get. We do know that there is some London connection. So the London Mercer's company makes some sense because Richard Rich's father had a house in Islington, which is which was then in Middlesex, but is now in, in, in London. And Richard gets left that uh, in his father's will in 1509. It's thought that he may even have grown up in the city. And this is why um, Thomas More when he says that he knew Rich as a young a young person, that the assumption is that's because they were both in London at that time. Um, so let's have a let's have a think about who he, he is. So Richard Rich marries in 1535. So at that time, there's a lot of stuff kicking off. Uh, we've we are th going through Reformation. We are still thinking about, you know, the visitations, the dissolution. We are before the pilgrimage of grace. So we're still, we're still, um, but religious reform and what, the, and what the fate of the nation is going to look like is a big question. Anne Boleyn is still in her ascendancy. Um, we know he's married before May of 1536, so before Anne's execution. He marries a woman called Elizabeth and this is where potentially his connection to the Mercers might come in because Elizabeth is the daughter and also the heir of a grocer called William Jenks. Uh, and this is very common among families, guild families in London and, and surrounding areas, is there is uh, intermarriage between the daughters of guild members and the sons of other guild members um particularly you what you what will usually happen is somebody like william jenks will employ an apprentice that he will train up in his trade and that person will frequently marry his daughter so it kind of keeps it in the in the family so to speak everything that i have read despite the just casual cruelty of this person there is nothing to insinuate that his marriage was not a happy one. There is nothing to insinuate that his wife had reason to complain of him, that he was cruel to her. Um, in fact, everything stands in quite the opposite way. Uh, it's very peculiar because you would think that a person who has the capacity to do the things we've heard Richard Rich can do, mm. he they they have a new we aren't even sure how many children they have but it's a lot they have at least three sons the with uh hugh and robert rich being among their number and they have something around nine or ten daughters we do also know that richard rich has a son out of wedlock called richard so an acknowledged son uh i'm I'm not sure when he's born so i don't know if he is a son that is born out of wedlock before marriage or not it's worth pointing out that we think that richard rich is born in around 1496 to 1497 he doesn't marry until 1535 so he has plenty of time to be to fathering, mm. sowing his oats, to, to do some fornification, and mm -hmm. to father a son outside of wedlock before he gets married. Of course, it's possible that he is also an, an adulterer. Although, considering the frequency with which, which he keeps, he seems to be banging his wife up. Um, he's knocking her up on the reg, and uh, he's also busy doing torturing. So I don't mm. know where he'd have much hands full. Um, Mm. Much opportunity mm. to get a bit of strange, uh, possible, of course. Of course, possible, of course. <laughs> it doesn't take that long, does it? To be fair, so uh, his illegitimate son Richard is the father of somebody who is knighted, Sir Nathaniel Rich. So, not only is this an acknowledged son, it's a son that carries the name, which I think is it's interesting that that a man like Richard Rich, who does in fact have these kids with his wife chooses to acknowledge an illegitimate child and as we're going to see uh treat them with some kind of equality among the children 
Um, we have drawings of Richard Rich and his wife Elizabeth, the sketches of them by Hans Holborn. As a, as a point of order, if you are going to be in the UK later in the year, there is going to be an exhibition of sketches of Holbein, the Holbein sketches at Buckingham Palace in the Queen's Gallery. So just, mm -hmm. just flagging that up. We've talked about his various roles and something that I want to flag up and particularly in his kind of turncoatiness is that the evidence seems to point to the fact that actually in terms of his faith, Richard Rich, which is Catholic uh, and fairly safely and, and, and stably mm -hmm. a Roman Catholic, However, as we know, he is front and centre when it comes to bringing about the trial and, and execution of Thomas More and John Fisher. He's also front and centre when it comes to the dissolution of the monasteries. Hmm. Now, when we get to the dissolution of the monasteries, as we've said, he profits extraordinarily from this. And I do wonder if this is one of the reasons why we see him uh, as time goes on. So when we look at things like the fall of Cromwell, when we look at the fall of Seymour, when we look at the the, the shift in his allegiance between to, from Jane to Mary, etc. I do wonder if what's happening there and in his role and willingness to be a questioner, an interrogator, even a, a, a sort of soft interrogator to sort of extract information by deception, as, as Fisher claims. I do wonder if he is doing that in the hope of reward. Because one thing that we do know about people who are executed as traitors is that their goods and lands and titles are forfeit or reverted to the crown. Is Richard Rich doing the things he's doing, loitering about with intent in the hope that because he's there when the person falls, he might get some shiny, shiny gifts as Almost he has the opportunity to as he had the opportunity to get some shiny, shiny monastic land. And, mm. and in doing so, he he increases his wealth. He uh, increases what his family can have. And he is known to be incredibly acquisitive. When you talked about the, in terms of like what we can infer from his marriage to his wife, the fact that, Richard, Richard Rich, by this point, has numerous capacities for wealth and, and land holdings, etc. The fact that when he gets the opportunity to play host to Queen Mary I, that he does so in his familial home, that he does, that he co-hosts her with his wife Elizabeth, to me, speaks to a union that is functioning. It's a union that, by the standards of the day, and this this is this is supposition based upon the available evidence. I want to make that clear. But the there are plenty of unhappy marriages when men come to prominence where those wives are rusticated, where those wives are packed off somewhere, kept quiet, funded, and and told to essentially keep house and bide their time. Mm. What is happening? happening here is that when he, at a moment of triumph so playing host to a new queen of england that's incredible he involves his wife he involves his family and she does and she can be trusted to do so and act in a way that is for their interest so there is something that is working in this marriage his wife dies on the 18th of december 1558 and she is buried in Rochford. At Ro she, so she's buried on the 18th of December, 1558, at Rochford in Essex. And by this point, he's sort of retired from court. But he is a leading landowner. And as a landowner, that gives you power. And he gets power in Essex uh, to do that, to do so. So he's he's got sort of sway and say in Essex in the 1560s. He's taking care of his estates. And as uh, you said, he's very interested in promoting education. And he does put his money where his mouth is there. His eldest legitimate son passes away. And this is when he endows a chantry at Felsted. Now, this 
the endowing of chantries, this is a, an indication of his Catholic faith. You do that because that's works. And works are a Catholic thing. They aren't a Protestant thing. Works mean that you think that you can essentially, through either action or funds, buy your way out of purgatory earlier. Protestants, particularly kind of Lutheran, Calvin, Calvinist Protestants, don't believe in purgatory. And they believe that justification is by faith alone. So by doing this, this by this endowing this chantry, it speaks to his his personal faith. Um, then he though, but however, so he does this in April fifteen fifty four. Then a decade later, in the May of fifteen sixty four, this endowment gets converted uh, when he establishes the and this is great, the free school of Richard Lord Rich. So he's not just like oh, it's a free school. He's like, but my name is going to be above the motherfucking door. <laughs> um, it's going to, I am branding that sheet. And as you said, it was there to educate the youth of Essex. Uh, the youth. Um, and interestingly, one of the alumni of the free school he founded is Oliver Cromwell. As so... Interesting. Mm -hmm. One of the people that, of course, he couldn't possibly have known that, but it is interesting that somebody who was educated due to his his behest is is a man who ends up killing a king. Um, we've got the arms houses at Felstead, and also he builds the tower of Rochford Church. So he's a builder. He's founding things that serve his local community. Maybe he felt he had things to atone for. I can't imagine why. <laughs> um, he draws up his will on the 12th of May, 1567, and then he dies not long after on the 12th of June. He, as you said, dies at Rochford. He's buried at Felstead in, on the 8th of July, 1567. He's, so he's the eldest surviving son, Richard Rich, in titles, sorry, Robert Rich in titles inherits the titles and lands as is as is expected. However, and what would normally happen is the eldest son gets the kit and caboodle. Um, there may be some minimal kind of pockets of cash, but for the most part, the the eldest surviving son get legitimate son gets everything, and this is one of the reasons. This is why second sons are like, I'm going to go to Ireland and colonise there. I'm going to go to America and colonise there. Because we used to put second sons in the church. And we also used to put daughters who were unmarried in the church. But Richard Rich has been uh, manifest in um, pulling down <laughs> all the monasteries and convents. So there's nowhere to send the umpteen hundred <laughs> bloody kids he had. Um, what he does do is that he... His, his, he has nine surviving daughters at the time of his death and he also has his illegitimate son and all of them are mentioned in the will all of them get legacies I'm not quite sure how much but they are they are all mentioned which I think is, is quite telling about how he how he views his, his family and children um, in 1620 he's still on the minds of his family because his great grandson has a monument built and erected for him at Felsted to celebrate his illustrious achievements, it taught in it in this uh, monument, Rich is shown to be a speaker in the Commons and also as Lord Chancellor, because in the monument, I'm not sure if it still stands. He's holding the Great Seal purse and he's uh, dressed in his state robes. Now, by the mid 16th century, so not. Not long after his death, or even, in fact, still during his lifetime, he does have this reputation for being an amoral turncoat with a propensity for sadistic violence. Mm -hmm. And this does, this is related to his uh, essentially tricking more into confessing tricking Fisher into confessing the stuff he does to Anne Askew. So all of this sort of litany of information 
makes him seem like a very not good guy. Um, he interestingly manages to piss off everybody. <laughs> he wasn't so, very popular, was he? Like ever, I don't think. But he was the thing is he was popular mm. with the right people. That's mm. the interesting thing. But was he popular? Did they like him? Was he handy? I don't maybe. He was handy. handy. He yeah. was handy. Yeah. Um, but and equally, not a um, threat, I don't think. He he would do the bidding. No. So I'd, he, yeah, I don't he think he would. He never have any delusions of grandeur in terms of seeking power and stuff. He'll take it if it's there. If it's like, yeah. like that's you know, an earlier, get, a spoil. But to get things like, to get roles on the Privy Council, to get roles of, of being like a chancellor, what that does require is it does require you to spend time with your monarch. So if they were completely offensive to that monarch, if they're like, yeah, I mean, he's a hatchet man, he's useful, but what a prick. He is dull and annoying. They just wouldn't get the job because you have to work alongside the monarch so much. Mm. There must be something charismatic, endearing. But then a lot of like, I, I know he wasn't like a, a, a leader, you know, like, but they say a lot of... Um, dictators and, and people like that are exceptionally charismatic yeah um what's interesting though is that he seems to fall out with the right people in some ways so when he he's doing the the whole kind of dissolution of the monasteries unsurprisingly he is the one of the focus points of robert ask and the pilgrimage of grace they are like richard rich is a problem <laughs> light him up um however so he's the pilgrimage of grace which is a, is a catholic motivated uprising fucking hate richard rich equally john fox king of the protestant martyrs i'm going to call him that's a term i've coined um <laughs> you know book of Mart one of the, the most the most famous book of martyrology i would say to have been published mm. in relation to protestants it is still affecting the way in which we view our history to this day. Sorry, I'm keeping you up, love. Um, <laughs> no, you know, it's not that. It's just I'm sleep deprived and old. Uh, so John Fox in the Book of Martyrs really, uh, and, and this is where we get, of course, the narrative of Anne Askew as well as her own narrative. And he really positions John Fox, um, sorry, he really positions Richard Rich as almost taking aboard this notion of sadism it's almost kind of like a borderline he takes pleasure mm -hmm. in the suffering he he's john fox kind of paints those brush strokes over it and it's possible that's completely true that he enjoyed it but that is part of him so this is what we have here is roman catholics hating him and protestants hating him and it doesn't get better as time goes on so across history he has been referred to with the following quotations j e oxley says that he has he had pr principles had no meaning for rich um a g dickens described him as odious and unprincipled um he also gets absolutely hammered in a man for all seasons the play of thomas more so he is rendered and i think when you sort of see him in, in popular fiction he does pop up in popular fiction because he is there at so much mm. of the stuff that we like to make tv shows about uh, and so when you see him pop up he is a slimy motherfucker he is dangerous and violent and desperately unpleasant um, I've just seen uh, C. McGee saying that Holbein has him looking quite pleasant. He does. Mm. And interestingly, the person who Holbein does not make look pleasant is mm. Thomas Cromwell. Mm. Holbein makes Thomas Cromwell look like a beady eyed, Shift. deeply shifty. shifty Properly yeah. shady. It's not it's not it's not a nice portrait. You compare it with the portrait of Thomas More, mm. this kind of open face, he looks intelligent. Thomas Cromwell looks like a, a nasty thug. Mm -hmm. But then you can you compare it to what him to the drawing of Rich 
rich, mm. soft. Mm. So then the question becomes, is, is what makes rich so fucking dangerous is that he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm. That Holbein, that great assessment of human beings, paints him with this soft face. This He looks kind. Mm in the portrait he looks really kind in the portrait is that how he works is that why when he went to see thomas moore and john fisher in prison was he that good that they just started talking i think from what thomas moore says he already knew that about him from what fisher says yeah, maybe. Maybe he did. Well, yeah, he must have charmed him. He he had him believing that he was free to speak, say what was on his mind, say thing, what he really thought. The one thing I say, I will say about Moore claiming that he'd always known that Richard Rich was like that is it didn't stop him fucking talking. Mm. And the one thing I will, well, the thing that he, I'll say about he Moore kind of is nice that he, he said it. Whereas Fisher says, yeah, I did say that, but I was told it would be... Um, that I was able to. The thing for me, the, the thing, the thing for me, I, I believe that Thomas, I believe that Thomas More would have said that. I mean, it's possible he didn't, but um, probably what I also probably think said about, it already in public anyway, hadn't he? So like it was. Mm. Yeah, what I do think about Thomas More is, and it's possible that Richard was prepared to perjure himself. I think it's entirely possible. What I will say about Thomas More is he is never a person that would ever acknowledge that he didn't know something. He is he. It's just not a person who's... He is also an individual with pronounced flaws. I know he's a saint, but he is. <laughs> a, he comes across to me as a deeply arrogant human being who I can imagine that he would, even in the moment when he's about to be beheaded and they're like, look, Rich tricked you, he'd be like, no, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Tri- <laughs> me, because I'm <laughs> Thomas Moore. He yeah. didn't. I knew what he, he was. I let I, I'm Thomas Moore. I le- I'm a friend of Erasmus. I let him <laughs> get me to say <laughs> those things because I <laughs> wanted to be a martyr. <laughs> Double dog. It's dare. all in the plan. I mean, all I mean that's yeah. This plan. is all my master plan. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe I don't really like Thomas More either. Oh, I, I, mean, I like Thomas. I, d- I don't like any of them. They're all well. Like yes, assholes. I did um, name my hamster after him though. So <laughs> um, Thomas or Cromwell. I see. Yeah, I. Sp- I suppose Thomas, that's, that's both. Those... Oh, no, the, the, the hamster was a Thomas More tiny hamster, Gary. Oh, it's a Thomas More. Yes, sorry. Okay, Thomas right. Better. Sorry, so yeah. he's not got he's not got a good reputation, and we were talking today about why there's been no biography of him, and it's weird that there's no mm. biography of him. It's very weird, um, and it's it's not because there isn't information, because uh, my colleague told me that there was work done on him. There is apparently an unpublished doctoral thesis that is the biography oh. of Richard I Rich from like the seventies. That was never turned into a published a, a, a published manuscript. It's and no one. So there was apparently sufficient information to write a thesis, and we are that is we are talking there about eighty thousand words. Mm-hmm. Imagine he's he's in records all over the place, just from the few yeah. bits that we've been yeah. through. He is he is. We've just talked about where he is. He is front and center for the fall of Thomas More, mm. Fisher. Catherine Howard, uh, sorry, well, no, um, Catherine Varrigan. He's there. He's he's there. He's in the background for Anne Boleyn, Wolsey, Cromwell, it, the on uh, Catherine Howard, the 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 end of the marriage of Anne of Cleves. Like he's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. All the way to the reign of Elizabeth. There he is. Mm. And I also wonder if one of the reasons why he doesn't. Like the, they talk about him not wanting to sign the act of or agree to the act of uniformity because his Catholic faith won't permit him. His Catholic faith had no problem in taking the land yeah. from from the from the church. What I'm going to suggest, and I can't prove this, I'm going to flag this, but I would like us to, to chew the fat on this one. Maybe the act of settlement in in the in the start of Elizabeth's reign is in many ways an act that allows equivocation. It's 
an act that, as Elizabeth is supposed to have said, does not seek to make windows into men's souls. Richard Rich's stock in trade has been finding nooks and crannies and crevices into men's souls, powerful men's souls, so that he can turn their words into heresy and treason. I think that he, I wonder if part of his reason for not liking the act of uniformity is that it makes it harder for him to prepare the noose mm. with which he will give other people That's to hang nice. themselves. He doesn't, I can't yeah, prove that. He doesn't um, really like that piece of legislation, does he? He doesn't like Elizabeth's he doesn't, kind of middle of the road. But it's, he, and, and the thing is, he doesn't have a problem with Edwards. No, he likes the extremes. Right, I don't mind which way you go. Just go extreme, and I'll go with you. Yeah. And that is because that's the how he profits. Yeah, because he knows exactly where he needs to be to get what he needs. He, yes, he There's knows no where grey to... areas. Mm. Yes, he can't work in grey areas. Like me and diet. He can't. He can't work yeah. in equivocation. Also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Is I mean, is that is that is that irrational? That actually, it's not about it being anti-Catholic legislation. He's, he hasn't got a problem on the premise of faith. I wonder if he hasn't got a pro if he has got a problem with the act of uniformity because it gives him less less ways in to destroy human beings. <laughs> He's just a really crap lawyer actually and he needs very, very defined right and wrong. Otherwise he can't find a good argument. Yeah. He's, uh, Maybe. Winged it through as people Yeah, do. he's just been winging it. Winging it is he is is it is though is what we're seeing here his with his capacity to essentially argue any cause and and bring down anybody is is what we're seeing here the same sort of thing as we see when people when solicitors and barristers defend people who have done utterly depraved shit and people go how can you defend that. And you and you say, well, it's justice. If both sides of the argument mm. needs to be need to be put forward, everyone deserves to have their argument argued. Is is Richard Rich that? But for the crown, if he behaved the way he, I mean, like, taking out the torture, but if we had somebody who went after people legally today in the way that he is, with this kind of dogged determination to destroy lives. <laughs> But through the courts, do you think we would think we would care? Would we be like this person's a fucking psychopath? Or would we be like he just did his job? No, I think we would still think he was a psychopath. I think there's a good, I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to play I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Yeah, no, I hate is... Richard Rich. I think he's a prick. But yeah. I don't think he, he I don't, unless it's just is just he is actually just good at this work and it keeps while it keeps coming he just keeps doing it and there's not major a major master plan it's just it's just it keeps coming so he keeps he keeps doing the work what's interesting about Richard Rich because obviously like Thomas Tom Cromwell is around for the destruction of a lot of people but he's also there for the creation of a lot of people there are people people who owe their careers to Thomas Cromwell in the same way that there are people who owe their careers to Wolsey mm. and Thomas More. Can't quite say the same thing about Richard Rich, can you? He he is a destroyer. I was going to say, he's, he's ended people's careers. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a destroyer of people. What careers has he built? Yeah, does he not bring anyone up behind him? Like, like uh, Cromwell did for him. Not that I can, like, because we see that kind of. Wolsey this might be in this biography that we can't see. Mm. I'll see if I can find it on know. on Ethos. But yes, yeah, mm. so because Wolsey brings brings in Cromwell, um, and then there's Richard Rich and Risley, and then when Cromwell supersedes Wolsey, he he sort of takes Rich and Risley on. Yeah. Who do Rich and Risley promote? Does the buck stop there? I don't know. I would. I don't I actually so. don't know. Uh, that's quite telling. That's quite telling. Yeah, I think. Well, they've seen them both go as well. They've seen Wolsey and Cromwell fall, and them take and they yeah the, the next biscuit. one took yeah and 
people slide into their role. So I don't want yeah. somebody coming up behind. Maybe he had something to do with it. Well, he did. He, he, oh, it, Raven points out that he does bring up Oliver Cromwell, but but not <laughs> but not by any design of his. <laughs> he just he makes a school that Oliver Cromwell goes to. But good point. Good point. Yeah. So that's uh, interesting. But he is... I wonder how he's gonna do in the get off. I think he's gonna I do he might be a... quite well. <laughs> Maximum points. Well, no, you see, the thing is, is his personal life might save him. Yeah. What do you think of that? Because we don't, obviously, like, I gave the... What do you think of my interpretation of his marriage based upon what the available evidence? Do you think I'm over-romanticising? Well, no, because, or do like you, think you actually... say, you know, he, he, there's, there's nothing... If you look at somebody like Thomas Howard, third Duke of Norfolk, I mean, everybody was all over what a shit husband he was. It was everywhere. Yeah. So, and he was somebody else who was like Richard Rich was not popular. People would never miss an opportunity to like sort of say this guy is a prick because, you know, he, they, 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 I also couldn't find anything to say that he was a particularly shitty husband. The fact that he did treat his children well, you know, he acknowledged and cared for his illegitimate son in the same way he made provision for guardianship and married, good marriage and everything like that in the same way as he did his other children. So in terms of being a family man, there is nothing to say that he's better than other people, but also nothing to say there's there's worse. So it's a tough one because he could have been really shit and we just don't know, but we don't know. And there's nothing yeah. to insight. If anything, mm. it's the other way around. The fact that, you know, oh, you don't have to like somebody to have sex with them and have kids, I suppose. But the fact of the matter is she wasn't trying to find ways to avoid him, possibly. <laughs> And yeah. you know, as you say, he, he hosted Mary with her at that absolutely critical, critical moment. And, you know, there would have been a lot of, sort of people to bear witness to these types of things. And also, like, if it was an unhappy marriage, there's also the, the, the thing is that having your wife there, is that there's a chance that she might profit too, that Mary might take a shine to her or, or to mm. one of your daughters or some such. Um, that kind of, it's an honour for that to be trusted for that um i saw raven asked uh is a lack of evidence proof that he wasn't a horrible husband no it's not no, we just it's absolutely know. not but what i will say is people in in the in the records both starting either either during the end of his life slash directly after so, so contemporaneous and continuing on people are tearing him apart in terms mm -hmm. of his um, behavior in a public context if he was an adulterer if he was cruel to his wife and children i do think that is something that will be brought up because it's something else to layer on mm. i think it's also telling that we have got a a great great a great grand great great grandson yeah. erecting a statue to him so clearly the family law mm. he isn't like anyone's funny twatty granddad he's like this is our king granddad mm. isn't he brilliant let's build a statue yeah i, it, yeah, I, I was I, gonna I, say that uh, about the statue because i didn't know that but this that, that was erected that's, after, yeah. So, yeah and that's so that's potentially not in like it might be in living memory because generations are he lives a fair old while and generations are are more compacted together but potentially this is somebody who's erecting a statue to somebody he never met. Mm. But that's the that's the, the speech about him in the family is sufficient that this person is prepared to, to pay a sculptor to make a statue of their great great granddad. And equally, of course, the, it, it promotes the rich, rich name, which is their name. So mm. that's good, too. Um, at Sun, Sunshine Girl says rich, rich compartmentalize his life and work like some of the best serial killers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whenever there's whenever there's a serial killer who's they always talk about how they they're not all loners, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they are married, happily married, great fathers to their children, and they can do the most depraved stuff out of the house. It is wild. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that happens. I'm not a serial killer. You can't prove it. Um, so <laughs> I I. It is that comp that we've talked about that kind of that compartmentalization, didn't we? Yeah, I feel like literally there must be a different way that the brain is wired that allows mm. that to happen. 
that there's yeah. never that yeah. moment of shit this could be this could this is someone's child I have a child and you know yeah yeah I don't know about you girls but as soon as I had children everyone was a child everyone was someone's child to me it completely changed my yeah. aspect on humans it did but the other thing is that if if I feel like someone is um coming for my oh, job oh yeah yeah clearly being humanized yes immediately yeah. I will kill you yeah. I'll, I'll, wear, I'll wear your skin yeah. as a suit absolutely yeah but I don't I, I honestly don't know how they don't seem to can... get that like kind of shit this yeah. could either this could Turning happen to rat. my child or or this is someone's yeah. child. They don't get either of those things. The turning the rack yourself. I mean, like sending somebody to be executed. I think is is. I don't know how you live with that, and to do it as many times as he did. I don't know how you live with that. But to physically, but he's not beheading anybody that we know of. Um, but to physically turn the rack yourself. Or to even be in the room, to even be in the room when somebody is in that amount of pain. Yeah. Mm. The screams could have been heard, could be heard from outside the lieutenant's daughter of course. and wife reported. Yeah. Yeah. Someone has always already said, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. They've walked out. Yeah. And you carry on. There's nothing. I mean, he had a partner literally in crime there with Risley, but but I think it speaks not have to how that. awful it was that somebody who is who feels the need to then go and apologise and seek pardon from Henry, which to my knowledge is granted, like nothing happens yeah. to the, yeah, to the constable for not doing it. Mm. Um, equally, nothing happens to Rich or Risley for the for the torture. Mm. There's no ramifications for anybody. Um. But the fact that somebody feels so horrified, somebody who works in a prison <laughs> feels so horrified that they leave the room and go immediately to, to seek the king's forgiveness tells you how bad it is, I think. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, well, I'm not sure when we're going to get to score him because, ladies, we haven't had this discussion because I've been away. But I had well, we started now. to have it over WhatsApp the other week and then didn't get any further, did we? Up, didn't we? So I was um, going to say, of course, Philippa, what's happening next week? Well, I'm not here next week. <laughs> and I'm not here the week after. I'm no, not here the week friend. after either. And then I think we might all be here the week after that and then I'm away for another... Philip is very French. She is. Um, she goes on sejour. Over the, so um, in the summer, she foxtrot Oscars. She does. <laughs> and we're like. <laughs> um, so next, next week. I think we might, yeah. Next Sorry. week, maybe I'm sure Kat and I can maybe throw something together for next week. We'll do something naughty. We'll do something naughty. We were quite good last week, actually, Philippa, weren't we? Yeah, we went I've heard. Too you went too bad. Well, we went too bad. Uh, we were fairly bad. We were fairly bad because YouTube limited our access to advertising. <laughs> yep. Oh, they, they, they did, they did, they did, yep. They did it that. It was restricted, limited. They did that with, um, I did a short of my description of Edward the Fir Edward the Fourth. excuse me, uh, meeting Elizabeth Woodville and it demonetised that as well. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's the well, mention of the I can't say the word because it'll happen to this one as well. Uh, I don't think it was the um the sexual content or the swears, it was the description of what she held in her hand, which oh. is gonna sound even worse. Uh yeah, anyway, so I think maybe. But anyway, either way. Uh, well we've we've spoken, oh, we've spoken I really this was, evening I rather a lot about aggressive behaviors so yes but it's not it's, it's not i don't even think we could thing. i don't even think we could spell it out i think that would pick it would pick that up so mm. we can't tell you so no, i'm afraid it's... if you went there i mean you can watch the short and work out what you it think with wife it, yeah and you use it to cook yeah and you can't say the word no watch the short see what you think but that, i think that might be why it's demonetized <laughs> Quite proud that we've had a demonetization a couple of times. If we um, hadn't, there'd be something wrong. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Ray, 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 
Oh, S is next, isn't it? That's we do have an S. Comes after all. Mm. You'll like it. We do have an S. Do you want me to say what our S is? Even though yeah, we say, yeah, we say. You'll put people cut yeah, out in misery. Okay. Okay, we are going to cover Thomas Seymour. Yeah. Oh, Rebecca. I need I you know I need to go and see a doctor with my blood pressure because <laughs> <laughs> I hope Rebecca it already. Larson doesn't watch because Rebecca's lovely, but she loves Thomas Seymour. Well it comes to Thomas Seymour don't have and to Richard love Rich. hate them it's, though. My, they are what they are. My feelings are I'm gonna let God handle it because if I handle it, I'm going to prison. It, pr- it probably is way, that man it. makes me feel it right now. I'm gonna let God hand it. He's still got his head. He's got he's got his hand on the head, just keeping him down in purgatory, just for a bit longer. Still, was it something? Um, a year in purgatory for every sin or something like that. So, oh bloody hell, he's still there then. There's quite a few people still there. William the Conqueror's still there. They're all still there. <laughs> <sighs> So. so yes, I don't know. Right, and the week after that, if there's two of us aren't here, could we maybe repost an old one from Insta? Mapes, mapes, or no. have a week off. Have a week off, ladies. No, so I'm just thinking, if we just put up an old one, then people who haven't seen the old ones have got something new to watch. If that makes sense. If we've still got the old ones. I don't know. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Well, do you know what? This is a conversation that we can have between <laughs> yeah. ourselves. On Welcome, everyone. This is why we haven't no, worked us. out. Join us. Join us. Uh, rambling. Well, there's are ways you could. There are ways you could join us. Um, there are. And look, oh, yes. There's going to be some things coming at the top of the screen oh. with various. Sorry. <laughs> there are various. Love you. I love you. Various words. Um, you uh, can. There are so places to find us. Want? We have link trees. We do have link trees. You can, we do. But... You can. We have got a. We have got a. Buy me a coffee. Mm, this is where a lot of things are. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash had podcast. Then you can support us. But you can also become a close friend. You can on, on, on Instagram. You are on Instagram. Yes, you can become a close friend where we, from time to time, send you something really random, which I have to warn you isn't always history related, but it is always inappropriate. Yeah. Yes. So appropriate. Sure yes. I need to know. Sometimes history related too. Uh, yeah. Yes, so that's done on our Instagram. Uh, yes, your past problems. Oh, yeah, and sign up for free for our Hubstack. Hub st- oh, Hubstack. <laughs> <clears throat> she means Substack, but she can't do yeah. words today. <laughs> this is one of the things that Philippa normally tells you about, Philippa. I'm so sorry. Tell everyone about Substack. That's okay. No, go for it. Well, so, so um, Substack is our, it's supposed to be going to, it's going to, one day it'll be the free. A hub of everything we do linked there but at the moment you're here and this is what we do and this is pretty much all we do at the moment there are plans in there progress plans. as you clearly can see plans. <laughs> the, plans. the actual anyway that's it's late um you can go to historyafterdarkhub.substack.com it's free sign up for that and then when we do do something on it you'll be blown away sideways Yes. Yeah. Front you ways. can also send your past problems post bag dilemmas <laughs> to History After Dark 2021 at gmail.com. History After Dark 2021 at gmail.com. And and your your yes. traumas may be bad for the world to see. Yes. The widows of Lancaster will speak on the matter, give you Let sound you advice. Why, and... wise, as, wise as they are. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Also, so... follow us. Follow us individually on our socials because oh, we're all we doing stuff. That, we? we are all doing stuff. Um. So mm. Philippa is having very exciting times. She just got wrapped on her incredible tour. I was looking at the picky pics, and I am well <sighs> gelled. Great. She's been. Yeah. So, what's your next tour? And when? So that was the private life of Anne Boleyn. The next tour is um September tenth, and it is. It is the Elizabeth the First and Mary Queen of Scots tour, where we'll be looking. And into... I take it it's already sold out. It's yeah, bookings are, are closed for that one. Um, what, so what what are you booking for? What are you what are bookings still open for? What, bookings are still open only... for September twenty twenty four, the rise of the Tudors, and it is seventy five percent already full it's already 75 percent booked so we have about two or three rooms left uh for that one that is september Wowie. 24 now i may well as you know i do the Amberlin tour each may that the 
the 16th to the 20th of May one is fully booked. So I may well probably am going to be putting on another one, which is going to start on the 30th of April through to the 4th of May. So obviously the 16th and 20th one coincides with her ex Anne Boleyn's execution date on the 19th. The other one will coincide with her arrest day. So the 2nd of May, when she's brought to the Tower of London, mm -hmm. we will go to the Tower of London on that day. So um, that one isn't yet on sale. So people need to follow me so they see when that goes on sale, um, because yeah. um, I think that one's going to go pretty quick as well. And there's another yes. one. We won't say what that is. But keep, there will but be keep another one. Eye, keep your eyes yeah. skinned. Keep your eyes skinned. Very because soon. There's yes. going to be. So basically. Philip is, Philip is just taking over the world of historical travel and she invites you along for the ride with really cool pictures so make sure you're following on her socials uh, Catherine and I are working on a thing for the first folio so make sure you're following her on her personal socials um, so we can all do that and also you can come find me on reading the past yeah make sure you're following us because we all do other stuff as part from we meet once a week and also other times to talk about de depraved history chat but we also do other stuff which is pg-13 none of us swear on our other platform we don't so if you want things that are i mean always okay <laughs> but if you want things that you know are going to be swear free not always child friendly but swear free you can check out our um more safe for work <laughs> content <laughs> on our other stuff <laughs> for work. okay so i think we're going to wrap that up now so uh, me and kat will see you next week and then we'll work out what's going on subsequently to that if you only yep, follow definitely. us on instagram thank you so much please consider as well going down to find us on youtube uh, where it is history after dark and uh, also as well if you are on instagram you can join our close friends via buymecoffee.com forward slash hat podcast if you are only following us on youtube again thank you very much please consider following us as well on instagram history dot after dot doc where you can become a close friend and we sometimes do screenshots and other little bits of content as well in terms of everything especially on here please do like subscribe hit the bell button share comment because all these things really really help mm. us in the confusing algorithms of the social media world that no one understands even the people that have invented them mm -hmm. honest about it so we really yep. appreciate your support thank you for the stickers super chats and things everything tonight we really do appreciate all your support on both platforms have a great week until we see you again think bad thoughts about thomas seymour we will be mm -hmm. well yes I'm going to count us yeah. out. So we're going to leave in three, two, one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>